What's up guys, it's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. Got sent a video from UFC President Dana White. Disclosure, I'm actually somewhat of a Dana White fan. I started watching uh, The Ultimate Fighter back in like 2007 and got really into watching mixed martial arts for a long time. Still enjoy watching it, still have friends that fight, and I respect what Dana White has built. Recently, he's been very much promoting Gary Brecca. Now, I don't know what the deal with that is. I know Gary Brecca helped him lose weight. Unfortunately, a lot of people can't seem to separate Gary Brecca's claims, which are very, very, very non-evidence-based, from the fact that Dana White got healthier following his advice. I am sure that Gary helped him make lifestyle changes, such as making better selections about food, drinking less alcohol, doing more exercise. That would indeed help Dana, and he did lose a significant amount of weight and his blood markers improved, but it wasn't because he was doing ice baths and 30-30 protocol and all these different like nuanced things or using a wand in his water, which is something that Gary promotes as well. It's because he lost body fat. Very happy for Dana. What I'm not happy about is when people spread misinformation. I have not watched this video yet. I did have some people send me some of the claims, so I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be super thrilled. Dana already got really mad at me on Instagram and called me a juice monkey. I don't know if Dana's on TRT, but I'm not. Calling me a juice monkey is interesting. Dana White does know who I am, which is kind of flattering. So thanks for that, Dana. So let's see what he has to say. Did this fucking 86 hour fast. So <laughs> apparently it sheds all the bad dead cells and oh. regenerates all these new cells Damn. to fight starvation or whatever the body thinks is happening. And there's over a 70% chance that when you do this, uh, you, you, you don't get Alzheimer's disease or fucking uh, uh, cancer and a bunch of other nasty shit. I'm telling you, I felt incredible, man. I felt- While you like were doing it, you felt incredible? Yeah. 99% of statistics are made up on the spot. I don't know where he's getting this 70% from. I have not seen that. Don't think that's valid. There's no evidence to back that statement up. What he's referring to is a process called autophagy. Lysosomal protein degradation. One of the things it is used for is to basically get rid of misfolded proteins, old proteins, cellular components that need to be broken down. So it has usefulness. Autophagy Autophagy isn't always a good thing. Uh, there are various cancers where autophagy is actually elevated and autophagy is not something unique to fasting either. Uh, a lot of these people who promote fasting, they claim that you know autophagy is like unique to fasting. It's not. Uh, caloric restriction will increase the rate of autophagy. Exercise will increase the rate of autophagy. It is not something unique to fasting and there's actually no evidence that if you equate weekly calories, fasting is better for autophagy than normal caloric restriction. Now people would say, well, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is if he fasted for 86 hours, that is three and a half days, which by the way, uh, kudos, because that's a long time to go without food. Like that's, you know, it shows a certain amount of wherewithal and discipline. So, you know, if that's something you want to do, no big deal, but it's going to be really hard to make up the, for the calories that you didn't eat during that time the rest of the week. So it's very likely you're going to be in a pretty significant calorie deficit. So if we match that calorie deficit, but just have people eat the same amount of food every single day. Yeah, sure, during that long fast, your rate of autophagy is gonna be higher. But then when you eat, let's say we're matching people for 10,000 total calories in the week, and he just spent three and a half days fasting, and now he's got three and a half days to eat 10,000 calories. That boils down to about 3,000 calories per day. Well, then his levels of autophagy are gonna be much lower compared to somebody eating 10,000 calories who's eating the same amount every day that means they're eating a, you know, about 1,600 calories per day or so. During the fast, his rate of autophagy is gonna be higher than those people eating 1,600 calories a day. But when he's feeding again, during the days he's eating 3,000 calories a day, it's gonna be much lower than the people who are eating 1,600 calories a day. And so I feel like people just don't think outside of a 24-hour window when they're thinking about what happens to these different metabolic processes. Now, I'm not saying fasting is useless. Fasting can be a really great tool to help induce a calorie deficit. And obviously, Dana lost a lot of weight, helped him get healthier, kudos. What I'm saying is, let's not make up BS about why fasting works. It works because it induces a calorie deficit. Effects on autophagy are not unique to fasting. The claim about you get 70% less Alzheimer's, based on what? There is no empirical data to support that contention. There is data to support that if you have lower amounts of body fat and are more metabolically healthy, you have a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. But you can do that any number of different ways, but the main thing being that you're just not over consuming calories and you're getting in a calorie deficit. I know Dana's probably not gonna be very happy with this video. After watching Dana scream at like a thousand UFC fighters, it's kinda cool to get cussed out by Dana White. So Dana, if you cuss me out for this one, cool man, still a fan, still like watching the UFC. 
and I'm glad that you've gotten healthier. I would just say like, hey, before we just claims out, you know, you seem like a no BS kind of guy. Maybe just have some skepticism and question those claims before, you know, spewing them out on the internet. That's all I would say. If somebody like me was making claims about fighting, knowing absolutely nothing about fighting, which I know absolutely nothing about fighting, you would call me out and call me a moron. And rightly so. Let's keep the nutrition stuff to the nutrition experts. But again, I am very happy that you're healthier and I hope that continues for you. Let's just stop making stuff up though. Catch you guys next week. Leave a comment. Have a good one.